Yeah, I've just had a, a text message from Mark Ritchie. He says, Simon, I'm trusting that your celebrations are going well. One church have been so kind to me through the years. I would love to be with you, but I got a better offer. <laughs> We've loved Mark Ritchie over the years, haven't we? We've just, uh, it's good. I want to start this session with uh, two scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Just let that soak in you for a moment. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Have you got a good imagination? Then multiply that by God's standards. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says this, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I was just captured by the words of Naomi Shearman. What was the word she used all the time? Abundant. Do you know, sometimes you think you're original by coming up with things like, live big. <laughs> I've got a new little slogan, live big. A hundred years ago, we just said, Abundant. Sometimes it's more in your heritage than you realize that a woman of God just kept reminding everybody, let's live abundantly. Let's, live, let's, let's love abundantly. Let's give abundantly. Let's have a lifestyle or a, a vision that is abundant. More abundantly, more abundantly that you might have life. More abundantly. Thank you, Sue. Should we get Sue on the platform again and we'll interview her? <laughs> Andy, you're clapping far too enthusiastically. Uh, but this, this is the passion that's in me. Like, we should never live small. We should never, we, not only is our heritage one of abundance, but our current status is one of abundance. Like, you have been saved to live to the fullness of God's life in you. There's a transformation. Like, God doesn't want you just to live your best life. This isn't some kind of self-help club. We're going to help you live the best you can. All right? Stick with Jesus and you'll make yourself a bit better. Right? That's not the message. The message is, we have been transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory. There is an abundance that comes not because of our ability to work a bit harder, not because of our ability to work on ourselves, although being a true disciple means to discipline yourself. You have been transformed. Think about that for a moment. I want to live a transformed life. Because it's not by my power, it's by his power within me. Can I forgive myself? Well, not really. Can I forgive my sins? Can I get rid of my sins? No, he has forgiven my sins. Like, can we remind ourselves of that? We live at a whole level because of his grace outworking within us. So when we call one another to live big, what we're actually doing is not saying work a bit better. We're calling out the greatness of Jesus in one another. We're saying, Christ is big in you, so live to Christ in you. As it says, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, have now all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And now to him who is able to, immeasure, to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. When we speak these words over one another, 
live big. We are prophesying over one another. Live big. I'm calling out the Jesus factor in you. Hello? I'm calling out the Jesus factor in you. I'm calling out what Jesus calls you in. See, the, the next hundred years have to be built on not some fancy vision or some fancy structure, but on an incredible Jesus who transforms lives and, and people who just every day say, I submit, Jesus, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. So today is your day. I'm your servant. What do you want? Our vision is quite simple, really. I was, I was just reflecting on this. Like, what, what, what are we meant to be doing? What are we meant to be doing? Like, there's a, there's a lost world out there, and it's getting more and more lost by the minute. Don't you see that? Like, I th we used to wonder what people are thinking. Now we know what everyone's thinking all the time. Just look at social media. I don't want to know what anyone's thinking anymore. I've given up with that. And the more I find out what people are thinking about, the more I weep, the more I think, God, help. Please help us. And somewhere in the middle of this crazy world, Jesus has decided the strategy for his kingdom on earth is his church. And that's us. Somehow, we are the plan. So, we need to reach out to a lost world. We need to disciple people. We need to grow some leaders. Then we need to send them out to be missionaries or plant some churches and repeat. We need to reach out to a lost world. We need to disciple some people and grow some leaders. And then we need to send them out as missionaries and plant some churches. Repeat. We need to reach out to a lost world. It's not difficult, church. We need to reach out to a lost world. We need to disciple people. We need to grow some leaders and send them as missionaries. And plant some churches. And we keep going until this body gives up or Jesus comes back. So, we need to reach out to a lost world. We need to disciple them. We need to grow some leaders. And then send them as missionaries. Or plant some churches. And plant some churches. Repeat. Or as we say in one church nowadays. The leadership pathway. The live big pathway. Sorry, forgive me. The live big pathway. Which is simply this. Encounter God. Come and meet Jesus. Grow personally. Discipleship. Become a leader and go and make a difference in this world. Because if you go and make a difference, you'll help people encounter Jesus and they can grow personally and they can then go and make a difference. And when you do that, people will encounter Jesus and then they can grow personally and then go and make a difference. So that Oh, I think you're getting the message now. <laughs> when do we give up on this? When we stop breathing? Well, till Jesus comes back. That's the deal. And if you're in, I'm in. Because I can't do this out you. And we need to do this together. So look at the video. Let's talk about encounter, grow and go.
Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Amy, and I get the privilege of looking after Encounter for um, our One Church network. So before I do anything else, I just want to say thank you so much to every single person who serves on an Encounter team, whether that is worship production, guest services, hosting, preaching, whatever it is, creative, every element that makes up our Sunday service. Um, we have dozens and dozens of volunteers every single Sunday that literally facilitate people encountering God. So can we give those volunteers a round of applause? Um, I may be slightly biased, but they are literally the best volunteers out of any team that you'll hear about. Um, but I've just got the opportunity to share about where we're going when it comes to encounter. And I could talk about so many different things, but I just, just want to share one thing, which we have actually been trialing in our encounter services for the past six months or so. Um, earlier this year, we got together um, with some preachers and leaders to talk about um, the kind of diet that we have when it comes to preaching on a Sunday. We recognize that as a church, we want to have a balanced diet of preaching because we all love a lovely light meal. We love a lovely light message that makes us feel good on a Sunday and we can go out feeling better about ourselves. But sometimes we need to talk about the meatier things. We need to talk about meatier things like repentance, idolatry. We need to talk about things like money and injustice and equality. And so we met together as leaders to talk about what does a balanced diet look like for us as a church when it comes to our preaching, our teaching series on a Sunday. And that led to us coming up with a brand new preaching program, which consists of four key areas of teaching. And those are church, culture, theology, encounter, and wisdom for life. So church culture is our family values. It's the way that we do things around here. Theology then is the study of God. It's big Bible ideas and explaining the Christian worldview. Encounter are things like how we encounter God, whether that's through Bible, prayer, worship. It's our Christology, what we believe about Jesus and who he is, who his Holy Spirit is. And then wisdom for life is just speaking into where we are at um, as a church, speaking into real life issues of money and relationships, forgiveness, mental health. As a church, um, we are really gifted with some amazing prophets and teachers. And what I love about the idea with um, our Sunday teaching program is that it collaborates and combines the strength of our prophets who listen to what God is saying for the church and hear the heart of God for you on a Sunday morning. Prophets and then teachers that can communicate that and apply that in a way that is, is real and relevant. And what I'm really excited about with this new program is that we will see the strength of those two gifts coming together and being maximized to be able to give us a diet that is healthy, that's going to nourish us, that's going to grow us in a good way, I guess, <laughs> grow the good parts of us, um, and that is going to equip us into being all that we need to be in this next season. And my prayer for our encounter services more than anything this year is that they will be anointed above everything. And that word anointing has just been something that we've talked about um, for a little while as a leadership team as well. The idea that our services are so jam-packed with the presence of God that whether you are a brand new Christian walking into church um, or whether you have never set foot in a building like this or whether you have been part of these 100 years for a very long time and earned your sticker, that you would step foot into our encounter services and be hit with the presence of Jesus in such a brand new transformational way. Amen. And so that is a little bit of where we are going for our encounter services this year. And now next up is where we are going for Grow.
disciples. Not growth just for the sake of it, but growth so we are spiritually fit. To pass on the holy truth, to lift the lid and raise the roof of knowledge. Not satisfied with catchy sound bites, but personally sharing spiritual insights. Praying, taking someone under our wing, opening up our life for them, becoming more than a Facebook friend. Authentic, more than just a spiritual waiter. Looking for tips and then see you later. Genuine, sharing over a coffee or three. The clarity of our theology, the flames of spirituality, the heart behind morality, the grace that makes the blind to see. It's time to rise above the old constraints, to realize we're all the saints, giants of faith without restraints, disciples, students of the way of Christ, full of worth and highly prized. It's time we fully realize what it means to be fully sized and grown, maturing in faith and truth and deeds, scattering a million seeds, loving the one or two or three he brings into our path to feed, growing personally, rooting our faith in scriptures, modeling ourselves on holier pictures, and Instagram and social media. Growing others, now is not the time to shrink. Someone needs me not to blink, but open my eyes and begin to think beyond me to generations still to come. What if I discipled one? A year, the vision would surely be realized. A healthy church full of life. Check her pulse and check her vitals. Disciples making disciples. Yeah, I was going to do that rap, and, um, <laughs> but I thought I'd train somebody else in the art, you know, get, get someone else growing big. Um, thank you. That was fantastic. I want to talk to you about grow. It's a passion of mine, and it's a passion I hope to infuse in you in these next couple of moments, and that was all about disciples making disciples. Jesus gave us this great commission, go and make disciples. He didn't say, go and gather disciples. He didn't say, go and find somebody. He said, go and make, make disciples. That implies we're going to have to get our hands into this and do this and put some energy and some effort into making disciples. But to make disciples, we're going to need some tools. And we're going to need some good tools. And as Grow Lead for the Network, my kind of uh, heart and my last couple of years have all been about trying to make some tools to help us to make some disciples. Uh, we already began the new people's course. I know that's kicking off already in locations uh, around the One Church Network, which is our first tool. And I want to today promote the second tool to you that we are releasing today. You'll be able to get your hands on a copy of this as you leave the auditorium today. And this is our new Christians course our new Christians course. This is about helping a person that says yes in one of our encounter services. Maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your family member, somebody you brought with you to church and they are impacted by the presence of God and they say yes to Jesus. What happens next? What happens next? Do we throw them into a classroom full of strangers? Do we put a program on? All of those things can be good and appropriate at times. But I tell you the best thing is when a disciple makes a disciple. When somebody says, maybe when you might say, come, come out to the coffee shop with me. Come to the pub with me. I've got, I'm going to help you know the next steps to take. I'm going to help lead you through to baptism. And that's what this course is about. It's 
eight sessions, the basics of the Christian faith. You don't need to prepare anything. You've got it all here. You just walk them through the journey. You love them. You pray with them. You share the basics of the faith with them. You stand at their baptism and you applaud and cheer them. And you begin a spiritual mentoring relationship that will go far beyond this little tool and will become something of a spiritual parenting in that person's life. Isn't that cool? What if all of us did that? Imagine, imagine the church we'd be if we made disciples one-on-one, couple-on-couple, family-on-family. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? But we need the tools. I'm not a great plumber. And the reason I'm not a great plumber is because when I opened my toolkit, and I had to fix my toilet cistern recently, so I know this. I opened my toolkit and I had a hammer and I had a, a screwdriver, and I had a pair of pliers. I can tell you, neither of those tools are very good at fixing a toilet. So you resort to hammering it. <laughs> or maybe you, maybe you don't. Maybe that just makes it worse, right? But th- this is the thing over the years, I think, in the church, is without proper tools, we've often tried to hammer discipleship into people. I want to encourage you. Take one of these away with you today. Get to grips with it yourself. Have a read of it. And then pray and say, God, will you give me somebody this year that I can walk through this with? Can, can you give me someone, God? Can you give me one person? Imagine if we created a culture in the church where that was just the norm. And I'm just discipling people because that's what Jesus told me to do. And programs are here to support. Classes will come on in church life to support. But never let them replace disciples making disciples. And that's my vision for growth. I want to empower you. I want to encourage you. And I want to uh, give you some tools that are going to help you get into this idea. What God puts in you, put in someone else around you. That's growth. Thank you. see uh, just a few images there on the screen from some of our our go missions over the last few years um i'm kev uh, and i have the privilege of heading up go for one church um three years ago i stood on the the platform at we are one and we launched a plan and the plan was to send as many people as we could 200 people to 20 different locations in 2020 across the world 220 of you Uh, signed up for that, paid your money, and were prepared and planned and ready to go. And then in March 2020, we had to cancel the plan. Like many other plans right across the world, they got scrapped at that moment in time. And of course, that's upsetting. And you, you ask God, well, why has this happened? And all this investment that we've put into trying to mobilize uh, across the world and have an impact uh, on, in many nations and in the lives of many people. But as I've been sort of praying on this through the year and I've still got lots of questions, i just come to this simple conclusion that, you know, the plan can get disrupted, but the vision doesn't. You might have to scrap your plan, change your ideas, change, change what you were going to do, but God still wants us to be a church, a network of churches that impacts the world. So let's find another plan. Yeah? Let's be a church that goes. And so just want to talk to you um, for a couple of minutes about some of the things we're going to start to be introducing and looking at through next year in the whole area of Go. Go splits into three different parts. So mission teams. So that's UK and international mission. And Chris and Lisa sitting in the middle here with their badges on. So they've been around a long time. Um, So Chris and Lisa um, head up our mission teams. So when we plan in the future and next year, we are going to be sending six mission teams out. That's that's what we are. That's what we've got vision and plan to do. Three of those in the UK, three of those abroad. 
three abroad. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. <laughs> We're going to do it. Um, so uh, be introducing more about that over the coming months as to uh, where we're going to go and how you can get involved in that. So Chris and Lisa are heading that up. Rob Page, uh, unfortunately Rob can't be here today due to family commitments, uh, but Rob heads up our community work. It's not Rob's job to, um, uh, to lead all of our community work across the one churches, but it is his job to network with what's going on uh, in your different churches. And I know some of you are doing some awesome things. The, st the stories I hear coming out of Canesham, you're, you're knocking it. You really are knocking it. That's fantastic. Um, the, the, the different uh, uh, um, events that we had throughout the year where we were able to give bags of hope and gifts of hope away, uh, incredible. So Rob wants to really just connect people, find out what, what's going on in the different churches, create a bit of an ideas hub and forum so that we can start supporting one another and, and seed different new community projects. Uh, so Rob is getting that off the ground at the moment. He shared his vision with us at the uh, apostolic team meeting last Monday. Um, and it's, it's incredible what Rob wants to do to start to bring us together, to start to support and just to be a servant leader leader in the area of mobilizing us into our local communities. And the third area, Amy, where are you Amy? Can you wave? Amy's down here, so my daughter. Um, Amy is uh, heading up Go um, in terms of teams. So uh, our churches don't operate without us finding our place, finding where we can serve and how we can help to create an environment that's welcoming for others. Um, and our Sundays don't happen without teams. Amy already gave a shout out to the number of people that serve on Encounter on a Sunday. Our youth teams, uh, our, our various different community teams that exist around one church. Uh, and so Amy's been uh, thinking, praying and working on how can we encourage more of you, more of us, to get involved in different teams? How can we find ways to serve one another and serve uh, those coming into our churches? Uh, and so over the next year, uh, we're looking at a few things. One is that we create the opportunity for, uh, for it to be easy for everybody to get involved in a team. Uh, and that's looking from the way that we uh, advertise things to the way that we sign up and the way we look after our team members. Uh, and the, the other part of that is uh, really how we celebrate uh, our teams and how we put things in through the year just to say thank you to you. Yeah, so building on some of the work that Gloucester have been doing around uh, the team thank you events like barbecues and honoring teams, uh, we want to see uh, just that uh, culture of honoring and thanking built in right across our one churches in the way that we look after and support you as you serve uh, the vision of one church. So those are the things that we're working on at the moment. We're starting to re-engage on Go Again uh, and, uh, and next year we will be getting out there more and we will be seeing people get on planes. I'm dipping my toe in the water tomorrow and flying at seven in the morning. I don't know what that's going to be like. I've forgotten. Um, but uh, uh, we are going to be sending teams out. We are going to be looking to serve our local communities. And we're going to be looking for opportunities for you to serve in the life of one church. You up for that? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Hey church, my name's Tom Geaches and I oversee OC Kids across our One Church locations. I just want to let you know about two exciting things that we've got in store for OC Kids in 2022. First thing is our kids camp. It's been so long since we've run a kids camp. We are so excited to bring it back at Easter 2022. Our theme is Easter and we really want to drill into the power of the cross and how God can change our lives and the kids' lives for the better. Our second project for 2022 is our greenhouse project and we're in partnership with AOG rolling out greenhouses across the nation and one church is a greenhouse church. Now that means that AOG is saying we're doing something spectacular in kids ministry so we open up our doors and let other churches peer in so we can help them grow. So those are two things that we want you guys to pray for. Kids camp that kids will encounter God and their lives will be transformed for good and greenhouse that will be able to empower and encourage other churches to grow. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Nathan and I oversee OC Youth across all of our One Church locations. And I want to start by saying this, a massive thank you to every single one of our amazing youth leaders that have led so well during this crazy time that we have been through. And it was wonderful towards the end of last term to see our youth groups gathering in person together again and all of the fun and the joy and the energy 
that that brought. That was just amazing to see. And our guys did such a good job of leading through that time. Um, and of course, all of that really culminated in Thrive Summer Camp. And that was just an incredible uh, time that we had together away at Kefin Lee. Um, and what I wanted to share with you guys just now is, is our focus really for 2022, leading to Thrive 2022. Our theme for Thrive 2022 is next level. Now, here's a quick teaser. Great, so the idea of that theme is that we are believing that as a youth ministry, we are about to go to the next level and we want to see, we are believing to see next levels of joy, next levels of fun, next levels of faith, next level encounters with God in the life of our youth ministry, next level passion for the name of Jesus to be had by our young people. So that's what we're believing for and praying for. Um, that's the theme of Thrive 2022. But we don't wanna leave it there. We don't wanna wait to get there for that to happen, but we wanna draw that and see that right here, right now in the build up to summer camp next year. So um, thank you for all of your support, your encouragement as a church. It's just a wonderful thing that we feel backed by each and every one of you, but please continue to pray for and encourage um, our youth ministry, our young people, and pray into that idea that we would get taken, we would go to the next level and see some great things happen this year. Just to add to that list, uh, each of our locations are working on a leadership pipeline. So cohorts of leaders will be taken through an 18-month course of development. And uh, Bristol have already started. Canesham go online in the next uh, November, next month. And uh, Gloucester and Podsmead bringing up the rear there. All right. It's going to be by the end of this year. All right. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to reach lost people, disciple them, train them to become leaders, and then send them repeat. Are you getting it? Yeah. Um, this does give me the opportunity to talk to you about naked evangelism. <laughs> well, <laughs> some people shouldn't be. <laughs> All right, I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. I'm just trying to grab your attention. All right, don't, don't stone me. All right. Um, since, uh, since I've been allowed to go back to the gym, I've started swimming again, and my reward at the end of a swim is to um, go into the jacuzzi. I sit in the jacuzzi, and every time I sit in the jacuzzi, I say, Lord, send someone to me. And of course, if I was standing here in my swimming trunks, <laughs> you'd be going, that is really inappropriate. <laughs> but in a jacuzzi, it's very acceptable. <laughs> in fact, if I was wearing what I'm wearing in a jacuzzi, it would be very unacceptable. But I have got some amazing stories of people who've walked into my office. <laughs> and while it's been bubbling, I've just gone, hello. Hopefully it's not as sinister as I've just done. <laughs> I'm trying to work out which story to tell you. I tell, I, the story I tell you is just sometimes you just get a little insight in how God works. So I'm in the... Uh, jacuzzi this guy comes in and he's clearly on holiday and uh, uh, his wife and child are in the play area for the children and he and I are just chilling out in the jacuzzi hi hi uh, he says his name's Luke I said hi Luke my name's Simon and we both discover we both have a son called Jack so we're just talking about being dads basically and then uh, I just say hey I've just you know I've been working on a book about fathering, which eventually will come out. <laughs> and uh, he goes, oh, really? Yeah, that's interesting. 
And I, I talked about how I raised my son on my values, my Christian values. He says, oh, you're a Christian. I'm like, this is my in. This is my in. Because, and he says, because I'm a Christian. I went, oh. I'm like, get out. <laughs> You're wasting my time and there's someone going to hell. <laughs> so we just get chatting and uh, I don't know, maybe I said one or two things that was useful and he says, what's your name again? I said, Simon. He says, what church? One church. And he says, oh, I'll Google you. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. I pray for him in the jacuzzi. Don't worry, there's a safe distance, it doesn't look weird. <laughs> but while I'm praying for him, I prophesy over him as well. It's wonderful. He leaves, I leave, that's the end of that story. Until the next day, I'm in the jacuzzi waiting for someone else. Fast forward a few weeks. Well, in our, li in our timeline, about three weeks ago, I'm in Austria, in Salzburg, in a restaurant eating schnitzel with Johnny and Angela Gator. Angela looks at me and says, you met my nephew. I went, what? She says, you met my nephew. She says, at your gym. I said, I don't go to a gym. Oh, no, 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 in a jacuzzi. I'm like, oh, I've been caught out. <laughs> <laughs> he says um, he came home and uh, he's from Cornwall and he was on holiday and he talked to his mum and his mum is related to Angela I'm like oh isn't that a small world and we had that moment of isn't it a small world except just pause for a moment why would someone remember my name why would someone remember my conversation or our conversation? Why would someone still, two days later, bump into another family member and just say, oh, I met this guy called Simon Jarvis. Why? Because it meant something to him. Clearly meant something to me, but it meant something to him. And suddenly, the world clicks together and the Holy Spirit whispers to you and says, See, trust me. Trust me, I just need someone who's prepared to do a bit of naked evangelism. <laughs> and right there is the vision. Not the naked evangelism. To come out of COVID, we have to be a people who just grow simply. And we grow by just the plus. There's a whole bunch of people in your world that I don't know who need Jesus. They're lost. And there's some hurting people who need healing. And there's some people who just need to find Jesus. And the only Jesus they know look like you. So, that's the vision. That's how we're going to grow. Find one and grow one. In the film Schindler's List, very powerful film, very powerful, he gets the end and the, the prisoners who've been rescued by him, the, the, the workers who've been rescued by him, they're sending him off and, and he's standing there. And it, he's not a Christian, he's not a God-fearing man at all. But he stands there and he thinks, if I'd removed one of my gold fillings, I could have saved one more. And he's about to get into his murk. And he says, if I'd sold this, maybe I could have rescued five more. And he's wrestling within himself that if he could have done something, he could have found one more. I found that very powerful when I first saw it. The whole film's very powerful. But it spoke to me as a person who thought, what could I give up just for one more? A bit of inconvenience in a jacuzzi? 
for one more. This is my rest time, isn't it? I've earned this, haven't I? But for one more, who knows what you're starting with a conversation? And I'm not asking you to find people kneeling on the street in front of you and anointing them with oil and saying, thou hast been forgiven. I'm just asking you to share the beautiful love of Jesus in your everyday conversation and start the con- whatever the Holy Spirit's doing around the world. Maybe our church will never grow from your conversation, but there's a church somewhere in Cumbria or Aberdeen says, I met this guy in Gloucester, I met this girl in Bristol, and she opened my eyes to the beauty of who Jesus is. John, in his narration, talked about streams becoming a river. And this is my last little story. I was on holiday, and they had a river in France, and they had a river at the bottom of the garden, and basically, I just took the kids and We just played in the river. It was up to about this deep. And we were just splashing around, playing in the river. And then one day, I just lay back in the river. And something happened. There was a power that moved me. There was a current in that river. That's what rivers do. They flow. Lakes are static. Rivers flow. And just by simply taking my feet off the ground and trusting a greater power, I went to a new place that I'd never been before, just down the road. (laughs) But for us, I think we've just got to lift our feet. We're washed in the river. We're enjoying the river. We've got the songs of salvation in our heart and we're splashing with salvation and we're splashing one another with the Holy Spirit and we're listening to some fantastic teaching. We're going, this is amazing. And God says, lift your feet up because there's a current that's flowing because the river, the source of this river was a hundred years ago and there's another hundred years to go, God willing, where's it going to take us? I tell you where it'll take us, it'll take us if we lift our feet and trust where people are, trust God where he's going to take us. So I simply ask you to do this. Find one. And grow one. It could be the same one. Just find one who's lost and grow one. Commit to grow one. If we do that, we will double. And if we grow them to find one and grow one, we will double, double. (laughs) Repeat. We've put some money aside at the moment. We call it the expansion fund. It's enabled us to start online church. Isn't that amazing? That's given us the opportunity to reach beyond the boundaries, our normal geographical boundaries. And uh, uh, currently, we know that 25% of our, our viewers come from another country. Wales. No, no, no. <laughs> just a joke, just a joke. 25% of people who are viewing our online church, it's only been going a month, so it's all right. But there's some people out there watching us from another country. So already we're like, do we have to start a church in another country? But we're seeing this as an opportunity for people to gather as watch parties and the potential of a pop-up church somewhere and start something. Why? All it's about, it's simple, is we're trying to reach the lost. (laughs) Disciple them. Grow them into leaders. And then send them, repeat. So we're putting some money aside that enables us to expand, whether that's a building or whether that's another church or whether that's planting something or a new opportunity somewhere. We're starting to invest into the future, knowing that God is going to be with us as we expand into the future. So I ask you, 
Would you stand with me in a minute? And when you stand, you're saying, I'm in. I'm in. I'm going to find one. I'm going to grow one. And I'm going to give to this, believing that God's going to double us and then double, double us. And who knows where that's going to go in the future as I pray for you. Would you stand with me, please? Father, I just ask that uh, you will just minister to us now. I'll ask that you will just... Who's the person we work with? Who's the person we share a jacuzzi with? <laughs> who's the person we live next door to? Who's the person that uh, we don't know, but there, there's someone out there who's lost, and you're going to call us to help them be found? Just going to find one, going to grow one. Father, I pray for students. I pray for university students and school students. I pray for mums and dads and children. I pray for fellow workers. I, I pray for people who are retired. I pray for every strata of life. I pray for the person who has life-controlling issues, that you will bring transformation God, we don't want people just to be the best they can be. But by an encounter of Jesus in their life, they will be transformed and find an abundance of the message that was a hundred years old, of what we say they will learn to live big for your glory. Amen.